Well, when I finished uh, high school, I applied at the CAP, which was Community Arts Project. I had applied to do performing arts. I had been um, dabbling in theatre uh, for a number of years prior to that when I was in high school. Um, so I thought, hey, let me try um, uh, switch to a course which was called the Visual Arts Program. You know, so I started making friends with the practicing artists and then I thought, hey, like, this is quite an interesting world I didn't know about previously. I mean, I've been painting, I did art in high school, uh, drawing and painting, but entering into kind of the world of practicing artists was something new for me. Um, and intriguing, especially because I had access to theater, television, and film. Um, people who had been working in those industries, I had access somehow, but not the fine arts. So that was a quite a curiosity for me. And that, I think that's what really kind of prompted the, the change. Taking the theater format and then stretching it sometimes. Um, in some of my drawings, I, I make. Uh, the kind of stage designs with notes, um, and that's because it's things I often think about, like uh, thinking processes, and I tend to find those notes and sketches or scribbles in the light very interesting at times. The possibility of impermanence, uh, I like. Um, this constant writing and erasure, writing and erasure, writing and writing. writing. Uh, and I think the, the performance piece echoes of our footsteps actually. They all do the very same thing, but in a, very, in a, in a performative way, theatrical. In 2001, I had uh, worked on this play uh, with Yves Dumelek and Keith. Keith was acting in the play, Dumelek wrote and directed it, uh, and we traveled to Grahamstown in the play. <coughs> so, I sat in on the rehearsals from very early on, from the rehearsal studios into like when the, when the show moves onto the stage now. So it's a very different kind of feel. Um, and it's quite something magical to experience, you know, it's like maybe observing an artist in the studio and like, seeing the process, the process, uh, and the chaos and the madness and the kind of teasings and pulling and pushings. Um, and then to the final moment where the thing gets refined and the editing process and then boom, you know. When I first staged it in 2010, what I did was I rewrite the script from memory. Um, and that's what I went with. Um, so, I mean, conceptually also is a very particular kind of exercise that I was doing with the piece. Um, beyond just like uh, the theoretical breakdown of the work as a, as a staging of a, of a rehearsal yeah, and I, I actually still think today it's one of the best performance pieces I've ever made. Um, yeah. In fact I'm thinking of restaging it later this year for my solo show job work but we'll see. I mean I'm interested in, in history repeating itself, I'm interested in, um, in contemporary moments which feel similar to historical moments and events. It's like reading theory and history um, and being able to read the, the present differently because you have a historical understanding of the politics or geography or economies and all of those kind of things. It's really hard not to be affected by what's happening around um, in the everyday. Oftentimes I feel like uh, one needs distance from, like if there's a, a breaking news event, for example, oh my god, this thing happened, blah, 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 blah. You know, and it's hard for me to jump as an artist and respond to that. I have to really, because number one, you're dealing with the media, or how is the, how are you receiving the information, number one. And how does one navigate the information to break it down? Okay, what's actually happening? Has it happened before? So there's a kind of one has to, at least in my opinion, uh, take time, you know. Um, just uh, an off point is like recently I've been following on social media people um, uh, praising Beyonce's recent 
uh, what they call it, video album. I've never heard this thing before, but the uh, video album. I haven't seen the video album myself, but I've seen like maybe shots of it. Like, there's this one shot where she's like with a uh, uh, baseball bat, like smashing the window of the car. And, and it's like everyone's like, oh my god, this is like, this is the best um, scene on the shot from this video album thing. And I've been watching people's commentary around this and studying them, trying to follow who's saying what about it. I've been reading articles. And funny enough, none of them mentioned people like her uh, or the Swiss artist, because actually that comes directly from her, from the work she did in 1997. Um, but everyone else is reading something different, right? Um, or I'm still waiting for who is going to kind of, and in what way they would read that thing, right? Um, so I think knowing what's been done before, or it kind of helps recontextualize things and one is able to pick up on certain references that people are doing. So it's those kind of things that like, I might be interested to see what's going on now, but it's also, I'm always interested to see how I can repeat things and how things are repeated over time um, uh, and how also they change with repetition or don't change. <laughs>